What of this drama screen and the anticipation of Kung Fu Panda, The Dragon Knight, arriving July 14 on Netflix? I'm here talking with the executive producers of this new show, Peter Hastings and Sean Nagogoshian. How are you, Peter and Sean? I hope I got that correct. You got pretty it. Close. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on this show, gentlemen. Um, I've watched yeah. the whole thing <laughs> and very much enjoyed it. Uh, as a big fan of the movies, um, I got to ask, um, was it always part of the plan to eventually spin it off into a series or a show? How did the idea for Kung Fu Panda, uh, the Dragon Knight come to be? Um, well, I mean, first of all, the idea to do any series comes from the character of Poe because Poe is just such a great, strong character that you can, I can just come up with a situation and go like, that sounds like fun uh, because he's so great and is going to just going to have a great take on wherever um, he ends up. Um, this, the, the show was originally developed by me and, uh, and Mitch Watson, uh, you know, internally uh, at at DreamWorks with basically a simple premise, which is about putting Poe with somebody who's just very different from him and getting stuck on a road trip. That's pretty much it. That's sort of, let's do a buddy cop thing with Poe because he's just a really fun, fun, fun character for that. That was the beginning of it. And then it uh, sp spread out into a sprawling adventure. Awesome. Now, usually when a movie spins off into an animated TV show. Uh, the voice cast uh, in the movies generally don't reprise their roles. You know, like Boss Baby on Netflix, they got this voice actor who sounds and speaks like Alec Baldwin. How important was it to have both Jack Black and James Hong back for this project? And were there any difficulties to, uh, to get them out of their busy schedules, if any? Uh, well, I would say that uh, like nobody can do what Jack Black and James Hong can do. They are completely unique. Uh, actors. I think, um, you know, I think it helped that we had COVID going on and productions were, were not happening at the time. And, and we, in animation, we kept going. Everybody in animation just kept going. It was the one thing that we could do. Um, so I don't know if that helped uh, get Jack Black back, but, uh, but it was wonderful to have him, uh, both of them. And yeah, well, it definitely, it definitely helped. Jack was not busy at the time. Um, and then also, you know, there are people that have been involved with the movies who are now working at Netflix and have connections to him. And so it was just sort of all the timing was, was you know, and he and I had a good, really good initial meeting talking about it. And uh, so all, all those pieces kind of came together. James Hong is the only character that has been in every iteration of Kung Fu Panda. So he's been in all the series and all the movies. Um, and then he was, he's, he was right back in. And he truly, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mick Wingert has done the, the voice of Jack and he does a really, he does a really great job. It's, you know, it's Jack is Jack. Uh, James Hong is James Hong, <laughs> very much so. Love working with him. He's 93 years old. He's always doing, you know, seven different takes of a line and they all work. Uh, and it's been a really a pleasure and honor to be able to work with him, with both of them. And, and also just on the voice, on the voice thing, um, you know, basically a newcomer to voice acting, Rita Ora. Yes. Rita, you know, Rita is a major celebrity and uh, she's had tons of hit music. She's been, uh, it's done tons of television kind of stuff, but mm -hmm. this is really her first role, um, in, you know, in a regular thing and doing voice acting. She was a little, um, uh, I don't, I don't really know. She's not shy. I don't really know what the word is exactly, but as we went on, she caught on so quickly and she has a really terrific, unique voice. You know, we read a lot of people, they all sounded good, she sounded unique. And then she has also really stepped up. So the whole lead cast has been fantastic. I wanna stay on the, uh, because I love the villains as well. Uh, Veruca and Klaus, voiced by uh, Della and Chris. Um, especially, uh, they, they crack me up, especially uh, Veruca, because uh, she's very clearly unstable. <laughs> so talk to me about casting these perfectly cast voice roles. Um, what, was, what went into the process of casting them and what was the decision behind casting Chris and Della? Well, I mean, it's uh, the the decision is behind their performance and the sound of their voice. So when you when you are casting, you know, you need to consider well, this sounds good, but you also want to make sure that they don't sound too much like another character or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then usually when I bring them in, you know, we do a little exploring, and I basically I encourage them to do it wrong. And it's like let's find the 
let's find the boundaries. Let's find the parameters of this of this character. Um, Della is just fantastic, you know, and I just go like, I want you to repeat words. I want you to be, have a crazy laugh and all this kind of stuff. And then, and then uh, Chris also came in with a very fun voice, but he also adapted to what was happening with Veruca. You know, I mean, I mean, this always happens. You write it a little bit, the actor performs it, you go like, oh, I get what they do. And then they go like, I get what you're writing. And then you kind of meet in the middle and you find this really sweet spot where those characters work. So I think the other element that they bring besides their acting skills and the sound of their voice was their enthusiasm for, for doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. And they have both been total pleasure to work with as well. Uh, and, I and also I just say Veruca's, you know, Veruca's insanity, her craziness and the, her comedic <laughs> nature really yes. works for us in both ways because it also, she's funny and it also makes her scary at the same time, which is great. <laughs> Uh, let's talk a bit about the animation. Uh, shed some light on that for us. Uh, we understand DreamWorks animation is behind the big screen stuff. But for this show, did you have to collaborate with other animation studios or animation production companies? And what were the features or details that you perhaps added into the character designs, not just for the new characters, but also for Poe and Mr. Ping? Yeah, I mean, the technology has changed. So we can actually do better with the fur now mm. than we could before we can like do better with eyeballs we can do better with like the palms of hands we have texture you can look at the sword and you can see that there's these like cuts and dings i mean we take our time like really getting in there and doing that and then we also have kind of better systems of lighting so if you watch the show it's going to feel like you're watching a movie and you're not quite sure why it's probably the lighting you know combined mm. with the design and the detail and everything so I think we were able to take it up a notch there. Um, we also were able to take the character designs into new places because we're going into new places. We're traveling to different lands and therefore different lands have different animals. And so that opens up design and you start to ask yourself, do we want a, a character that slithers uh, or wraps around to fight? You know, How do we want them to, to move? How do we want them to do things? So it kind of opens up a lot. Uh, and, it, and it expands the universe in a way that has never been done before in all the series and in all the movies. Thank you for that. Um, I noticed some characters like Komodo dragons uh, are, are on the show and stuff like that. And you, you wonder like Komodo dragons, are they in, aren't they in Southeast Asia? So I'm just wondering like, what are the decisions behind uh, creating some of, the, some of the new characters to fit the storyline? And uh, will we be able to expect the uh, tiger or mantis to show up in the, in the upcoming seasons? Peter? Good question. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm just going to say right now, we are creating an individual, unique story for Poe and Blade kind of out on the road. That's that's what we're doing. So um, uh, that's that's a big question. It's really about the Furious Five. We basically, uh, you know, I've kind of I've been saying it's like, uh, you know, move over, we're driving. So we're, we're taking this story into new places with these new characters and kind of a side adventure um, for Poe. And um, the what was the other thing you asked about? Come on, dragons. Yeah. So I think um, um, I can't speak exactly to the we, we're honestly with our actors, with our locations, with our, all our details, we are being very meticulous about being authentic to the locations where they are um, and uh, and staying staying true to that. Um, I don't know if I can know everything about Komodo dragons, but I can tell you that the design, the animal choices that we make tend to be specifically from where the people are from. And then also that they fit the characteristics of what we need the character to be uh, and, and to do that. Um, so, Anytime we've gone anywhere, it's sort of like, what are the animals that are native to this place and what would be fun to do and, and, and do with that? So that's been a fun challenge in the whole show. As, as I'm winding down, I wanna ask you both, uh, what is it about uh, Poe, the Kung Fu Panda that makes him so timeless and lovable? Is it, is it Poe's naivete? Is it Jack Black's charms? Or is it all of the above? Well, it's, I mean, certainly, I mean, Poe is Jack. So there's, that's just, that's just the truth, just the truth of it. Um, you know, what I say is that he's a lovable loser who can kick butt. And, and that's what's so charming. A lot of, there are a lot of great characters, you know, that kind of have that, that quality. So you get someone who can be humble, someone who can stumble, somebody who can head to a rumble, somebody who's, um, who's can see a bee that's a bumble. 
Yeah. All right, stop it. Okay. Um, I will say but, that um, with Poe, um, in terms of like what makes him a great character to to be on screen, uh, he's different from you know on other shows you have like Superman or or Optimus Prime or whatever who are leading the show and they're 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 tough you know Batman they're like almost unbeatable and you, you know it's like it's great because they're like this person that you can look up to but they don't have faults. Mm -hmm. And when you use them in the stories, it's really difficult to write for them and it's really difficult to board them because they can't do anything wrong. You know, you can't give them too many mistakes. You can't let them get beat. But with Poe, he's totally unique because he is the underdog. He can be beat. It, you can just insult him and he'll be so hurt that he might lose a fight, you know? And he also plays in the realm of Kung Fu, but he kind of plays in the realm of Jackie Chan where like there's a lot of prop work, you know, he's fighting over a dumpling or he's holding <laughs> onto a rope while people are fighting on the rope and he's fighting on this side. And, you know, there, there's the Jackie Chan element and then there's the comedic element where someone like, punches him in the stomach and is like and then they <laughs> punch back so he's got this like he's like everything you ever wanted in a leading character he's the underdog he's funny he's cute he's sad he's happy he's not super tough but sometimes he can be you know for fun <laughs> um and he's hilarious so it's it's all those things that makes poe maybe one of the most unique characters ever Finally, I don't know if you can share this with us, but um, does this show exist to also revive interest or plans for the movie Kung Fu Panda 4? Is the fourth Kung Fu Panda movie something that's on the horizon? Do you know? Not, uh, not on our radar. That's not our gig. So I don't know. But I think, I think, you know, again, when you have a great character, you're always looking for ways you can, you know, maximize and enjoy him forever. So we'll see. We'll see indeed. All right. That's all the time we have for my fans at home. Everybody go check out Kung Fu Panda, The Dragon Knight, arriving July 14th, only on Netflix. Peter and Sean, thank you for talking to me. Congratulations hey, thanks, and skadoosh. Thank skadoosh. you, Rama. Skadoosh to us all. <laughs>